Chris. Hello, Josh. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. I'm Chris Hanna. I'm in the band Propagandy, and I play guitar, and I try to sing, both rather ineffectually, often. I'm, uh, my name's Jord. I uh, play drums in Propagandy. I like to do things like the Tar Sands Resistance Tour with Substance and stuff, and the Reinforced Action Network, because that, that brings an element to a tour or to a show that isn't present at a lot of shows, and I think for an audience might it might be just a little, you know, in a, in a very standard venue, and you know, you're herded into the venue, you're herded out of the venue. But in, in the meantime, when you're in there, there's a show. Plus, there's why is this? Why are all these activist organizations here? Well, what is this? And yeah, there's something more going on than a band getting old and tired. Yeah. <laughs> Said this in a couple of interviews on on this trip so far is that I knew about the tar sands before. And I knew it was bad, <clears throat> but but seeing the literature you guys brought, what's going to be there in 30 years is, you know, it's scary to think that far into the future with mm -hmm. this stuff going on. The amount of resources that it takes just to get the oil out, it, it doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. They're using up more than than it than you're going to benefit out of it, and uh, they're expanding beyond their capacity to expand. Um, all of the water is going to be tainted and, uh, you know, more or less poisonous in the near future. And yeah, like who's going to be laughing at the end of that? I'm realizing even during the course of this tour, because people ask me, what's the most important issue to you right now? And I'm always like, well, we think everything's kind of connected. But then I'm, I say that uh, those sort of things ebb and flow too. When you learn more about something and your attention's on it. And right now, the, I mean, the tar sands have gone up quite a bit in my estimation on, it's on my radar just during the course of the past 10 days. And I think that uh, the short-sightedness of, uh, of what's happening there, uh, the fact that regulatory boards in Alberta are supposed to be overseeing these processes are employed by, by the same industries that are extracting or trying to extract the the oil from the tar sands and it's like it's a complete joke there's no accountability whatsoever there's no real substantial amount of profit going back to the people of the province i think the job you guys are doing is great so it's a it's <clears throat> both times that you've been out with us i've been like gotten more than i expected out of even just the the pre-show kind of speaking with the crowd thing like a it's always impressive to me, uh, your ability to handle the crowd. I think one thing that would help continuity from that point, from that you know, compelling speech through our show, would be to give a band like us, you know, say, five talking points. And our goal is to incorporate one of them into our set. Because during the flurry of songs and sweat and people jumping around, you know, the end of the set comes around. We didn't say a fucking thing about tar sand, like this being a tar sand resistance tour. And uh, but if you're if you're held to account, a little you know one goal for the night, and then it just it provides continuity. I think uh, for the evening, from you know it's not just like why was that guy up there? Like, who who said he could go up there? You know? Yeah. Well, one one. Um idea I had, which I was going to ask after the interview, but might as well since we're on it now, of um, if, if maybe tonight and tomorrow we could time it so that you guys come on right afterwards. Is that logistically possible? It's, I've been, every night I think that. Uh, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. So I think they're ready to come on, but I think Propagandy would only come on if they know how much you guys are serious about stopping the tar sands. You want to show them that you're serious? Stop. So 
what's the next uh, what's the next thing to try to do, you know? Because there's always comments of people yelling, "Oh, did the band walk here or whatever," you know? Because obviously we're driving a conventional vehicle, and it's like, well, that's that's not the that's a very facile argument. But one point I would like to make to people, and I keep forgetting to make, is that even if every uh, civilian citizen stopped using their cars today and the military kept rolling on, we'd still be, I mean, things will be over in 50 years because of runaway global warming and stuff like that, and, and just the, like, things like guitar sounds won't stop. Like, so. And I think that uh, if a campaign's done against, you know, one of the biggest banks in Canada, and they start to think that, uh, you know, the people at the bottom of the small accounts are are bummed that their their uh, money's being used to be invested in that. You know, if 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 you get to the point where people are actually pulling their accounts out of that, and uh, you know, then that's ultimately going to be the point where uh, the executives are going to take notice. Again, before this before this tour, before hearing you talk about it in, in your work, I, I would have been more like. I don't know, man. I think everybody. I think it's over. I think, I think we're heading down. We're barreling down a path to, to self-immolation. But I like to. I like to hear what you were saying about it being an opportunity and there being more potential for different political stripes actually working on this issue. But my my gut instinct is isn't there yet. And I don't have that much information to, to feel better about what's happening. I, I, I guess I still have a certain amount of hope because I think average Canadians and Americans um, would not agree with what's going on if they knew the details about it. But they need to know the details and they have to be, you know, reached out to, informed and then challenged to put this practice to a stop. And obviously the sense of urgency is paramount. It has to happen sooner rather than later. But of music, I've, I've personally been transformed from a very, very, very stupid person uh, to a less stupid person who actually um, feels more empathy for other people's situations than I used to when I was, you know, 12 or 13. Uh, so, and, I, and I assume that other people can have those transformative experiences through music, and that's sort of our, one of our prime directives. For other people, what a band like MBC did for us in 1983 or whatever, and uh, that, that's a powerful thing. I guess I guess the other point of hope that I have is that if if uh, you know a small group of people can get the ball rolling, I think that there is a chance that people will gravitate towards it and will support. Uh, maybe a, like if we can get this thing to an actual movement where uh, where environmental groups and social justice groups are finding common ground and are able to uh, you know depend on each other for uh, for uh, you know the different causes and uh, unite somewhat, then uh, I don't know maybe we can turn the ship around.